Hello, Killian Hill. This is Pastor Mac. I hope you had a great Easter. I know I did, even though it was different and we would all prefer to be worshiping together in person. It was still an encouraging time. Um, I hope it was for you. I have a devotional thought today from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 that I want to share with all of you. I'm going to read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1, and then verses 9 and 10. And there's a, a couple of words that stood out to me as I read these verses here in close proximity. 1 Thessalonians 4.1 says, Finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. And then in verses 9 and 10, just a few verses later, it says, Now concerning brotherly love, you have no need for anyone to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. For that indeed is what you are doing to, uh, to all the brothers throughout Macedonia. But we urge you, brothers, to do this more and more. The little phrase that stood out to me from those verses that's repeated is more and more. And in verse 1, the Apostle Paul, writing un under the inspiration of the Spirit, tells these believers to walk and to please God more and more, to have a, a closer, deeper, stronger relationship with God more and more. Um, and then in verses 9 and 10, he says similarly, but a little bit different, um, love one another more and more. So taken together, Paul's telling these believers, love God and love each other more and more uh, as you grow uh, in your Christian walk. So he's essentially telling us to, to grow in our love and in our knowledge of God and one another. Um, and that was a good reminder for me to read those words um, that there is always more growing to do in the Christian life. And especially in 1 Thessalonians 4 here, uh, Paul isn't calling them out and saying, you're failing in your growth, you're failing to love God, you're failing to love other people. He's saying in both of these sets of verses that you're already doing it to some degree. He says in verse 1, uh, just as you are doing. And then in verse 10 as well, for that is indeed is what you are doing. So he's not calling them out saying you're failing in this. He's just simply saying, you're already doing this, but I want to encourage you and urge you to do it more. And that more and more phrase could be translated abounding more or excelling more or overflowing more in good works and in their growth for God. So it's a nice encouraging uh, tone here to this. Sometimes when we think about doing more in the Christian life and God's commands, uh, it can feel very burdensome, like we're trying to live up to pleasing God. And if we don't, uh, if we don't live up to pleasing him correctly, we're a failure and, and God's looking to condemn us. Um, and the tone of this passage calls us to do more, but it's, it's encouraging, and um, we can recognize that you know, God's not looking to condemn us. Um, we're saved by grace, and he's calling us really to do more for our own good and our own happiness. Sometimes we have this idea of that to really be useful in the Christian life, God views us as a uh, a dish rag that he's just squeezing good works out of us. And when he's done with us, he just throws us to the side. But really, when God calls us to do more in the Christian life, it's for our good. I've been reading this book and I just finished it. I referenced this book in my last devotional. Um, it's called Growing in Holiness by R.C. Sproul. And he has some great um, things to say about how doing the right thing and growing in holiness always leads to our own happiness. Um, he says this, to be able to look into the face of God himself is the greatest longing of our souls and the deepest satisfying of our desires. And he's using that, um, he's describing the goal of, of holiness and the Christian life as looking into the face of God, simply knowing God more is, is what, he's, what he's saying. Um, so to so to love God more, that's not, um, that shouldn't scare us um, that, you know, God would um, use us up, but that, no, this would lead to greater happiness for us. And also R.C. Sproul says a similar thought concerning 
uh, sin, so often we think sin brings happiness, but it doesn't. R.C. says, sometimes we think obeying God's law will keep us from being truly happy, but to act against the law of God is to consign ourselves to unhappiness. It is impossible for sin to bring true, lasting happiness. It brings only ruin, destruction, and misery to the human race. So when the Apostle Paul, when God tells us to know God more, to love one another more, it's for our greatest good and our greatest happiness. You know, as I was thinking about the, uh, this lesson here from 1 Thessalonians, I was reminded how easy it is to stall in the Christian life and to stop growing. Maybe for me, sometimes I, I, look, I look at it like, well, I'm, I seem to be doing pretty well. I'm, you know, if I'm doing the bare minimum in my Christian life, if I'm reading the Bible, if I'm praying every once in a while, then I think, okay, I can check that off my to-do list. I'm growing. Um, but that's not a good attitude to have um, because that leads to laziness. It leads to letting our guard down to give in to temptation. And it's not following the spirit of, of 1 Thessalonians 4 here, which says, keep abounding and excelling more and more in the good works that God has called you to do. Um, if we're stalling in the Christian life, if we're, if we're not growing, chances are we're moving backward. We're giving into sin and temptation. So it's a good reminder to not stall, but to keep abounding more and more in loving God and loving each other.